I am thrilled for this, but I do have some, um, I do have a Cabernet uh, Sarli Blanc. I don't know what this is. Because when this, this cocktail runs out, then I was going to go with this. Ain't nothing wrong with that. You do, you do what make you do what makes you what makes it work for yourself. I'll tell you that. What makes you happy? I just got off work. So like, Woo, let me, this right on time. Carmelo said, "Let's have some drinks and talk." Okay. This like hey, listen, I, I I I like that. I like that, man. I just wanted first of all, I want to say thank you, sis, for you know jumping on what's in your glass with me and just you know shooting the shit and having a conversation and drinking some wine and or, or drinking out your red cup and. You know, just have it, have a good, have a good conversation, man. I want, I want to give you the, the I want to give you the right introduction, though. Um, we, you know, comedian, actress. Um, let me see, Emmy winner, um, co-host of the award winning show, daytime talk show, uh, the real, published author, um, and tonight, she is our guest on What's in Your Glass. She is the Lonnie Love. Welcome. <laughs> I love that. I love that. <laughs> how you doing? How you doing, sis? How was everything? How was work? First of all, how was work? It was work. It was good. It was a good day, though, because um, people that don't know, I take two shows, two to three shows a day for the real. Then I'm doing some other things. But today was a good day, Carmelo, because we were able to celebrate uh, this uh, election change. Also, with having the first black female. Uh, vice president elect so it was it was a good show you know um because we didn't know how it was really gonna go so it was a good show today what i, I, I want to i want to jump right into it i want to talk about your book man i want i want i want you to talk about the book okay. um it's it's uh, i i just want to discuss it uh i want to pick your brain on it i want to uh like talk about kind of the state of the country with right now after the actual election um you know, for so long on this actual show, we've been talking about getting people to go out there and vote. Um, and now we see the power that we have as people. Yeah. But I want I, I want to I want to discuss your book. I want to talk about your book and why you decided that the time was now to write that book. Mm -hmm. Well, the name of my book is called Love. Of, well, I actually my second book. Um, and the thing is, is that it's a memoir and it's called, I tried to change so you don't have to. And oh. the reason why I named it that is because first of all, um, it's a book about people accepting their flaws and accepting themselves, but it's also a memoir and it's also a comedy book. Um, I think it's very important, Carmelo, that we tell our stories. And I'm talking about specifically black people, people of color, because if we don't tell our stories, somebody else will tell it and it will be wrong. So it's very important. And I, and I stress that to everybody, um, all of my fans, all of my followers, if you don't do anything right now, this is a pandemic. And right now you need to be jotting down what you're going through, through this pandemic. I don't care if it's just a couple of lines in the morning or a couple of lines at night of what you went through. It's important because you know, a hundred years from now, people will be saying, how did those people get through the pandemic? And the way we are getting through it is more important than anything because people of color are more affected by it than anybody. So I just implore everybody to write their story. So basically this is a memoir. It takes you from the beginning of my career, um, the beginning of my childhood, all the way to me winning an Emmy. And it's also, I wrote it to, to inspire people, to inspire especially young black kids, to let them know just because you grow up in the projects or you, you have humble beginnings, it doesn't mean that you can't make it and you can't do something phenomenal. And that's what this book is about. Indeed, indeed. I think it's very important for us to have that kind of context, right? And and, and to put everything out there. I think we, we you know, as, as black people, we tend to shy away from being vulnerable at times and we tend to shy away from uh, talking about our, our, our emotional side and, you know, afraid of what people might say and the feedback that we might get from that. So I think your book is, is very pivotal for the times that we're actually in, especially with the change that we're about to experience. I mean, hopefully the change that we all been fighting for, we, we're about to, we're about to experience that. Um, before, before we go dive all the way into the book, what I want to know what's in your red cup today. First of all, <laughs> just a little orange juice <laughs> with a lot of vodka. <laughs> oh, uh, a lot of vodka, a little bit of orange juice. 
just a little bit. <laughs> what's your what what what's what's your go to like wine down after work drink? Whether what's your go to? Well, it depends. Today is Monday, and I actually usually don't go this hard. But it was such um it was such an emotional weekend. I wanted to celebrate, so that's why I'm starting off with a cocktail. But I usually just do a, a wine on the weekdays. You know, wine with you know my steak. Or, you know, it, it would be a red wine or a white wine if I'm having fish that day. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I'll have wine. And then Thursday, I take a break. And then Friday, I go to the cocktails. So that's that's my that's my drinking schedule. So obviously, you I mean, we all watch the election. What was your drink of choice for the watching the election? Champagne, because champagne <laughs> is the drink to celebrate. When you just want to celebrate, we do champagne. I had I had a bottle of Dom Perignon that I was saving, and um, once the election results came in, I put it out there, and I was just happy. Did you drink that night? Did you drink? I did, indeed, I did, I did. I I had some wine first, and then once once it happened, then we went champagne. We we went champagne. We had a couple shots, but you know, tequila in there, but. Uh-huh. It was it was it was definitely a lot of champagne on that celebration. Yeah, it was just a, it's, the, it's the it's the new it's a it's a we want to say it's a new beginning, right? If we, we yes. we've been we've been dealing with this for so long and just you know the 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 separation between you know races and people and just it's it's terrible. It was it was it was heartbreaking, it was terrible to see what we were dealing with as people as a country. So to finally get that burden off of our back is like damn, like. We got to celebrate. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So well, and, and even now, like now, the, now the work begins. Like it's not. That's, tell them again, Carmelo. The work, the work begins now. It's not. We can't. We can't get complacent. We can't get comfortable with, you know, with, with this new change of regime. Like we have to uh, keep applying the pressure and keep doing what we're doing because it, it starts. It starts now. It and starts I want now. people to understand, Carmelo, because, you know, right now, uh, the other side is contesting all of this. He is not conceded. Trump has not conceded. So a lot of people have to understand that they're still counting the votes, but the projections have Biden and Harris as clear winners. Um, and we just want to give a shout out to Georgia, Detroit, oh, all the black areas, you know, those, those, you know, city, urban city uh, voting centers, they came through, but it just shows what happened. Stacey Abrams and what they did down there in Georgia was phenomenal. But I just hope people realize that this is democracy and that their vote wasn't wasted and their voice was heard. And you are so correct. We still hold them accountable. Once all of this craziness, the lawsuits and all of this, because December is when the electors will come into play. They will make the official um, certification of the president, and then there's a transition of power. We still need to somehow have a transition. Unfortunately, usually it's it's done by now, and then it'll start. But because someone is being hard headed, he's acting like a fucking five year old. You know, now we gotta wait to December, and there was, it's some Secret Service agents that sisters Carmelo. They will go in there and they will get him. I hope they they had a sisters go in there first and say, "Come on, time to get out. Get the time to get out. You're lost. Take this L and go home to Mar-a-Lago or wherever you gonna go, cause that's democracy. That's the whole Fact. thing. It was fair and square. And then you, the thing is, the mail-in votes, cause the mail-in votes rolled up on people like Rick James did in his video. <laughs> I know you two y'all don't remember Rick James, but Rick James rolled up in that one video with smugglers. That's how the mail-in ballots came in. Everybody was like, oh, because we was all feeling bad. We were like, oh, God, he the one. He the one Pennsylvania. They, but they wasn't calling it. And then the mail-in ballot, they was like, hold on, because my friend Pookie, my cousin Pookie in Detroit, she she down there voting, right? Because, you know, it's all my cousins down there voting. It was like, uh-uh, we got three million million votes. So we got to, we we ain't made no call, Lonnie. I was like, thank you, Pookie. And I knew when Pookie, because Pookie don't lie. All Pookie do is count them votes. And she was like, we got three million. It's going to take us like a day and a half to do it. And you see what happens. So that's because of the good work of everybody. You know, everybody should be proud of this because we all made this happen. Absolutely. And, and I think this is the first time, I'm going to say that, this is the first time that people really feel and understand that they vote counted, 
right now. But for so long, you know, we are, we've all said our vote don't count. What am I voting for? This vote is not going to count. But this time, I hope everybody out there understands the importance of the vote. And for everybody to get out there and that went out there and voted, we see the change that that, that happened. Uh, I'll take my hat off to Georgia. I mean, they, they did a phenomenal job down there yeah. in Georgia, man. And that I, I want people to understand how important that is and, and very monumental uh, that that moment was for Georgia. So I'll take my hat off down there to Stacey and I just, cheers. Just, cheer. I'm, I'm, I got it. Yeah, I got I got a cheer. I got a cheers to that too. Mm. Let's 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 get back to talking about your, still your cheers and hold on. Oh. <laughs> okay, let's let's go. <laughs> you got it. Yeah, I got it. Cool. <laughs> let's 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 get back to talking to about about your book. Mm. Um. People would say like your story is 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 the actual like American story, right? The typical American story. It's it's you know humble beginnings, uh, hard work, and you know you, we we persevere. Um, again, I think you you answered this a little bit. What what really made you share that? You answered it a little bit, but let's let's dive into that. Because I like I said, I want people to know that you can come. And I know nobody, not have no hookups, not have an uncle in something, and you can make it. You just have to work hard. And and I wanted to share my stories. You know, I was homeless at one point. Um, I got kicked out by my mama out of the house for, over a boyfriend. Um, you know, I ended up uh, not knowing anything about college. I was able to get into college. I was able to get uh, a scholarship. And these are all stories that I need to share because a lot of people don't even know my story. People, th you know, they see me like on a the reel. They thought they think that, oh, I just made it there. But it's so much. I did the the, the road on, for comedy for 15 years and I was doing the CD hotels. I wasn't getting paid sometimes. Sometimes the promoter was trying to, you know, make me do things and everything. And it's like, it's all those type of stories that's in there. And, you know, it's, especially being a female, I want people to understand why I am the way I am today. And hopefully just give them a little bit of inspiration and encouragement. And you can have flaws in this country. You can have flaws. If you want to change them, fine. But sometimes flaws help you to stand out. So I also point out, you know, each chapter points out different types of flaws that I thought I had to change in order to be accepted in this in this society. And the, one of the biggest ones was being in Hollywood thinking, you know, all I was ever going to play was a maid or the uh, cafeteria lady on a Disney show. And that's just not true. So I share all those stories and I show how I became my own boss, how I became creative and how I want to give back to my people and my community because we need that upliftment. All of that is in the book. What was what was that experience like? Like dur during that time as you you know you you toured for you know 15 years right so like what what was that experience like and and knowing the grind for a comedian you know for, for a comedian but also for a black female comedian like i'm i'm sure it was probably 10 times harder than 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 a male comedian on, on that grind so let's talk talk about that experience let me tell you the reason why you don't see a lot of female comics carmelo is because they don't want to do the road cuz that road is fucking hard it's hard to have a relationship when you're on the road because, you know, you gone, your man, what's he doing? You know, it, it's hard to have children on the road. Don't nobody want to leave their babies. I mean, you know, being on the road as an athlete, but as a female, it's just really, really hard. And that's the reason why you don't see a lot of females doing stand up in the, in the local clubs. But I had to do it because I needed to build up my act and build up my sense of humor. And I also wanted to understand in different um, regions of the country, what the sense of humor was. So, you know, down south, their sense of humor is, is totally different than up in D.C. But the only way I was going to know that is if I actually toured and did those things. And while I was touring, I was trying to get a break. But I had to keep doing that because, you know, I, I had to put money in, the, in my pocket. So, you know, like I said, there are stories about me. One time I ended up, I didn't know I was working for a pimp. You know, he didn't want me to sell no pussy. He just had me just trying to do jokes. And then he didn't pay me because he wasn't a, a, a he wasn't a promoter. And I was just like, wait, wait, wait. And I didn't know he was a pimp until his trick came in. It was like, Face said, come here. I said, who is Face? And why are you dressed like that? And I was like, wait a minute. What is happening? 
wait a minute. This is a this is a pimp. And he was like, yeah, I'm but I'm going to turn into a comedy promoter. And it wasn't nobody at the show. It was a disaster. And it's like, it's those type of stories that's in the book. That It sounds unbelievable. But when you're young and you're trying to make your money, you take any type of gig. You take any type of job because you need the money and it's scraping. But I use those stories to show people, you know, at, there's a light at the end of every tunnel. But it was really, really hard. And that's why you don't see a lot of females out here because that road is tough. It's really, really tough. So dealing with so dealing with so you dealing with somebody like face, right? <laughs> and, 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 and no, Shout no, out face. And those, the guy the dealing with face. You went through that phase, and then it came a point where you started to to experience some type of success. Like when was that? How how far along was it uh in, in that 15 years when you started to like feel that success and witness success? Well, prior to the 15 years, Carmelo, I ended up going to a, historic, a historically black college, Prairie View M University, and yep, I got so. an engineering degree. And when I got my engineering degree, that's when I started to kind of dibble and dabble in college with stand up. But I ended up getting a job because it was dental benefits because, you know, black people like, no, get you a good job, get you some dental benefits. You get a job with dental benefits, you good because your teeth is got to stay right. If your teeth is hurt, your whole body, I was like, oh Lord, I got to get some dental benefits. So when I got my degree, I got a job at Xerox in El Segundo and um, it was in LA. I'd never been in LA, but it's just something moved me because it's like El Segundo. And I can remember as a little girl watching Sanford and Son and Fred Sanford always talked about El Segundo. So I said, that's the place. Who else? What black girl is going to get a job in El Segundo? That's a sign because I believe in signs from God. So I said, that's a sign. So I got the job. I was 22 years old. Um, and they put me into this group of engineers. And it was all white males. And it was all over 50. And I'm 22 years old. And then was a culture shock. It was a process that I had to understand because I was totally different from them. And I talk about that in the book about the things that I had to go through with these white males and they're seeing this change coming into them. So that's a part of the, my story as well. But within that time of being an engineer, I decided that that wasn't for me. And I decided to start going back into comedy. So I ended up doing comedy for like like three years, I was doing it at night and I was still doing my my job during the day because I need them dental benefits. So I kept doing it. And then finally I got a break and my break came um, when I did a comedy um, festival for HBO. HBO loved me and I ended up getting a deal for HBO. And then I went back to my job. We had a layoff that same day that I got the deal. And I went to my boss and I said, please save a job and lay me off. And he was like, what? Are you fucking crazy? You're going to lose your dinner benefits. I was like, it's fine. I got a, a deal with HBO and I, I left engineering and I never looked back. But it was still a long road because I thought I got a show. I'm about to do this. I didn't get a show till 10 years later. And that's in the book. Damn. So... <laughs> <laughs> I had to, I had to scry, I had to, I had to pause for a minute on that. It's that, that I mean, honestly, that grind is real, man, and and, and mm -hmm. you know we, it's 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 real, and you know every genre has they they own way and old version of, of of what the grind is, but I know for a fact that the comedy world is an ultimate grind. Like that's one of the ultimate grinds out of out of any genre out there. That's the ultimate grind, mm -hmm. and. Again, like you said, you you was an engineer before you, you you was going to school for that, and then you did fifteen years. Fast forward into today, like how did that how did that make you prepared for what you were able to go out there and do today? Using your platform, talking about different topics, different issues on the real, sitting there, and you know you you there with the you there with the ladies, right? It's, it's, <laughs> You know, you, you got to be, you got to have a voice. You got to have a strong voice when you're dealing with, mo you know, multiple personalities like I that. be sitting there with them heifers, Carmelo, and sometimes I'm like, y'all don't even know what I done been through. I'm sitting up here. I was, we started off with Sister Sister and then Tamar, and then they was already stars. I wasn't a star. 
I was the, the, the fat chick. Like, who is this bitch? They was like, who? Who is? Who is she? That was a fight. My life always been about a fight, Carmelo. It's always been about grinding and making sure that you get your name up. But prior to prior to me getting the real, I want to give a shout out to all the male comics that let me open for them. They put money in my pocket. It was Eddie Griffin. It was Cedric the Entertainer, D.L. Hughley, Kevin, little ass. You know, it was like, <laughs> they, you know, because they knew that I was serious. They asked me for no pussy. They could have, you know, sometimes they could have asked, you know, sometimes. I would have been... <laughs> You know, big girls, you know, it's juicy. But what I'm saying is, you know, but no, they they looked at me as a professional and, you know, they put money in my pocket and I appreciate that to this day. And it's a whole list of them, you know, that I actually worked with. And that helped to build me up. So when you say, well, what prepared you for the real? What prepared me for the real was doing the road work, you know, doing the jokes, making people, you know, laugh and everything. And then I ended up getting this job on... Um, Chelsea lately with Chelsea Handler because I became friends with her. Shout out to Chelsea uh, Handler. And that actually prepared me to sit on a panel because I never really worked with anybody else. As a stand-up comic, you always work by yourself. You don't work with other people. So I sat there and um, I had to, I did her show for like seven seasons. Now that's seven years. I did her show for seven seasons and I learned the workings of sitting on a panel with other people, give and take, listening, you know, trying to be funny or putting in a punchline, something like that. And then I got hired by a lady um, because her guest DJ left and that was Ellen DeGeneres. So when they say women don't work well together, that's not true because Ellen put me on her show for a year and a half and the money Ellen get is, I seen Ellen give somebody a house a whole house from scratch. She went, Ellen, Ellen was getting those type of sponsors. You know, the real, we gonna never get that to that. We, I try, but we gonna never get, we give that 5,000, 10,000. Ellen was giving $20,000 a week to people in need. And she was getting it all from sponsorships. But what I didn't realize is that that was preparing me for my own show. Cause I was just like, wow look at this because people love her and all this other kind of stuff and so when i did the ellen show i ended up doing a deal with telepictures which is the production company with ellen they came to me and i had did a deal to have my own show because see that was the, my whole goal when you read about it in the book my whole goal was get my own show i've been saying that everywhere i go to charlemagne i go anywhere i go to angie martinez i want my own show that's all i ever want but then they came to me. They said, we're going to give you an show. I said, great. Then they came to me about two weeks later. And they said, we got this idea. We want to do a show that's never been done before. All women of color. Can we do a show like that? And I was like, why you want me on it? They was like, well, why don't you just come to the, to the chemistry test? Because they always do a chemistry test. And so I was like, Ugh. and because they were the production company, I wanted to make sure that I was in good with them. So I said, I'll just sit down and do y'all little chemistry tests and help y'all out. Ended up doing the chemistry test and they were like, you gotta stay on this show. And I was like, I want my own show though. Why can't I do my own show? That's what you said. I was just helping you out for today. You know, why the fuck? I want my own show. But then they said, Lonnie, this is gonna help so many people cause this has never been done before. So please just do this. and." And I felt like it was, you know, you never seen anything like the real where it was all women of color. It would give a voice to our people. We would talk about the things that we need to talk to about our culture. So that just moved me. And so I decided to do the real. And I've been on that shit since this day. <clears throat> that's why you got the red cup? And that's why. <laughs> <laughs> Still on the show. And don't I don't want nobody to get me wrong. I am very happy for the real. And it, it was a purpose for it. But I have learned a lot of lessons by being on the real. But because now in the seventh season, I'm getting more opportunities that I never thought I would have. So that's why I always tell people, 
there's a reason for everything. And I say that also in the book. There's a reason, you know, why I was on this show for seven seasons and this show for two seasons. And now this show is seven seasons because to get me to the point that I want to get to. And you ne- you say, yes, yeah. sometimes you just show up. You show up. That, you know this, Carmel. You show up. 80% of the win is showing up. You know? Absolutely. And so that's what I've been doing. And that's what I keep doing. Even And I just keep drinking to it, too. <laughs> <laughs> but so but using like so you having that platform right you had you having that platform of being able to go out and talk about you know different topics that that's mm-hmm. going on mm-hmm. um do you find it hard to be as honest as you want to be do you find it hard to be transparent with 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 with, with the people or <clears throat> is it like whatever like i'm just going to do what i do i'm gonna say what the hell i got to say and we're gonna talk the talk and whoever don't like it don't like it Carmelo, I have learned. See, this is the thing. I have learned that in television, things are translated differently. And that's the one thing that I now learn. Um, sometimes you could say something, and at times we were live on the show, and you could misspeak. And you do that, you can't take it back. You have, to, you have to understand what you're saying. That's the thing that I have learned by doing this show. There are things that I, I may have said maybe three or four times only in, out of over uh, 1,200 shows that I said that I wish that I could take back. But because we were live at the time, I couldn't take it back or because of time. So you learn what you can talk about and what not to talk about. The thing th- in this season that I want to do is uplift my people men and women. I want to inspire them. I want to give them as much money as we can scrape up. I want to give as many sponsors that we can get to to help them out. And so, but I've learned from my, you know, from my misdealings and my mistake. And the biggest thing I want to tell people out there, sometimes you ain't got to say nothing. Sometimes you ain't got comment about every damn thing. Keep your mouth closed. Be like, oh, <laughs> silence don't mean that you wrong. <laughs> It don't mean that you're wrong because you 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 quiet about something. Sometimes it ain't none of your business to even be in. Uh, uh-uh. And so that's what I've learned. Because people are like, just say what you want. No, you can't. Not in this age you can't just say because it's so many different people because of social media that will trans transfer it and translate it the wrong way. And you're like, no, I didn't mean it that way. I promise you. I was trying to say it. Nah, nah, nah. You know, but so, it's too late. That It's too late once it's out there. It's gone already. It's gone. It's gone. And then the blogs get it. And once the blogs get it, it's a wrap. It's <laughs> they just put one headline. Lonnie said, all black women don't know how to eat. I'm a, I swear I didn't say that. <laughs> they they do a they do a headline just to get you to click on it. But then what they don't realize is people don't read the they they look at the headline, don't read the article. They just come straight over to your 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 um social media account and they be like. I mean, you said black. I was like, I did not say that. I promise you. I promise you. It's a whole conversation. So I've learned to be very careful about what I say and how I say it. And my point is to be more positive, to uplift my people. Like I said, let's make some money. Let's, you know, make sure that we're presenting um, and putting people on the show that normally wouldn't get on television. You know, ain't nobody putting Tyler Perry shows on TV. Right. We do. Ain't nobody, ain't nobody putting them on shows. Sorry, Oprah, it's truth. They ain't putting them. We do, cause that's the purpose of our show. Let's uplift our people, you know. And so that's what I've learned to do with the real and and make it work. And it, and it's working out. What's <clears throat> aside from the book? What's next? What what, what you what's what's next for for Lonnie? Well, right now I'm doing a show called Bridezillas on We TV. The reason why I chose that project is because it was mostly um, black women and they wanted a, for the, the first time in 13 season, they always had just the creator as the narrator. But because they were mostly African-American women, they asked me to do the narration and to write some jokes and stuff. And so I took on that project and uh, we, we were able to get it in right before COVID is running right now, Thursdays at 10 on WeTV. Um, I'm also going to be doing an after show for little women on Lifetime. And I'm also working some other stuff, 
that you know you can't you gotta wait till you sign a damn contract because they get of course, mad if you of course you know? <laughs> but what I'm saying is the opportunities are coming and it's just as black creatives um you know I'm I'm working on my own show still and it's gonna be my own show but it's it's not gonna be the way I thought it was gonna be and I can tell you this much it'll be animated. That's not bad. I actually like animation. I do too. And it's just, I, but I never would have thought that I would go into animation. And that's the thing is that, you know, and I talk about it in this, in the book about how this, this industry is so different and you never know who you're going to touch on or who you're going to, you know, um, move. And then they go, you know, I read your story and I think we could do it this way. And you're like, Oh, well, that's still my own show, but it's a different type of show. So yeah, I mean, we just why, we just being open. We just being open minded to it. Well, that's what I'm saying. And my thing is, I just want my own show because just like you see Issa Rae, you know, when you're able to control your narrative and control your show, it's more authentic. Whenever there have been shows and maybe the show runner is not of your culture, they don't understand what you're going through. So if you, you know, if you say something like, you know, um. You know, I'm drinking out a red cup. Well, why does it have to be a red cup? We we should put it in a wine glass. Like, no, bitch, it's a red cup. This is what we do. That's how we drink. I'm from. I went to school in Texas. That's all we had was red cups. And you want to give the significance of the red cup? The important. You know, the red cup. It keeps it cold. You see that condensation right there? It keeps it cold. I've been talking to you for about 30 minutes. It's still cold. I still got ice. That's why we do a red cup. Why we don't do a glass? Glass will break. <laughs> you don't hear me. I'm a, fan of, I'm a fan of I'm a fan of red, red cups. So you 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 right you right up my alley. You right up my alley with this one. Before 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 we before I let you get back to enjoying your Monday. Um, <laughs> wait, I, I usually let the guests take the floor, uh, you know, give the people some words of encouragement, uh, talk about um, kind of where we at, where you at, us as a, us as a people, us as black people. Um, and it's, it's, it's been very good for people to hear that from, from my guests. So I want to give you the floor to, you know, give us some words of encouragement. Especially now with this new, you know, hopefully with the new change, uh, we'll see what happens over the next couple of weeks. Um, but you, you got the floor. Just give us some give us some words of encouragement. OK, words of encouragement. There is a season. You can, tell us, you can tell us to fuck off. You can tell us whatever. Just <laughs> give us. <laughs> you ain't right. <laughs> Just fuck off, y'all. Sick of y'all. Um, you know, no, I think that this is a good time to say there's a season for everything. If you don't understand that ecclesiastic, that that's what um, Joseph Robinette Biden Jr. said the other night. That's his middle name, Robinette. Um, <laughs> he 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 uh, quoted ecclesiastic that there's a time and there's a season for everything. And I even think with black people, there is a time and a season for us. Um, there's definitely right now what you're seeing is a time for black women and women of color, but especially black women who've been overlooked. And I do not want you guys to get discouraged and think that it's a separation between black men and black women, because that is not true at all. Um, black men have always been there to support us, to be there for us. I have my brothers and my cousins and you know, we just have to come together and we all know that we'll be OK. Black people have always come together. We've always been the backbone of this country. But right now there's a there's um, a spotlight on black women and we should enjoy that and celebrate that. And, you know, understand that there's room for everybody. But right now, black women are celebrating. But I just don't like that feeling, Carmelo, that. You know, there seems to be a separation between black men and black women. And so um, I just want to make sure that my responsibility on the show is, you know, one thing that we're doing this whole month, I got Walmart to sponsor. <laughs> you know, when I told you about sponsorships, I got Walmart to sponsor 
um, giving um, recognition to black dads. We do a lot of things for women on the show and especially black women, but we want to highlight black dads because that's something that I think that needed to be spotlighted and that's what we're doing and we're going to continue to do. We got about 130 more shows to go. We're going to keep trying to find the right type of a, uh, if I can find a liquor sponsor, I probably can find one quicker than find a refuge, but we're going to do all that we can to spotlight and help our brothers and sisters. And right now is our time. I'm proud of everybody for voting. Everybody that voted, you matter. You made this happen. I hope you cheers and celebrate. And that is what I have to say. <laughs>